Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and thank you for stopping by once again. I want to take a, just a minute here to mention that some people have had some difficulty in making out my words or hearing me uh, clearly. If you have that kind of problem, this is a YouTube video. Down in the lower right-hand corner of the video screen, you will see the letters CC, as for closed captions. If you click on that, you should see uh, my voice turned into written words, um, captions, subtitles, whatever you want to call them. Google, Google does this automatically. And uh, I don't type it up for it or something like that. This is not a script. It just takes my voice and turns it into words. It will make mistakes from time to time, but I think it's pretty impressive on the whole. This technology has made a lot of strides over the last few years. So if this is helpful to you, just click on that, and between my, hearing my voice, seeing my lips, and, and reading it, you should have no problem. Um, it, or it could be just annoying. <laughs> if so, just bring it to an end. Click it again. But I did want to mention that for those few of you who have written in that regard, and hopefully that will help. Okay, now I want to take you out of around the city, out of the city, not out really, out on the edge of the city, and then work our way back into it to show you some of the alternatives that we have when we are looking for food. And we have supermarkets, plenty of them, very modern supermarkets and very ordinary supermarkets and things that you aren't going to feel the least bit uncomfortable walking around. They're going to look as normal as ever. But we have a lot of other alternatives too, because even though we are an urban area, no question about that, we're right in the middle of a, a lot of farmland and rural area communities not that far from the city. So we have alternatives, and I use these alternatives to do some of my shopping, and you may well do it too, but a lot of expats just end up going to the supermarkets. And they're not bad, but you can save money and sometimes you get better produce if you go to the local stores. So I'm going to show you a few of the types of stores that we have available that are really quite common throughout Panama, but all around the metropolitan area as well. So I'm going to go back and forth here to the photographs, and uh, so bear with me. Okay. All righty. We went out on a ride. This is out on the edge of town, uh, but it's very definitely urbanized. No question about that, just the edge of the city. Unfortunately, Luis, the young man who's running this, is uh, got this rope hanging from the, from the canvas above down there. It makes him look a little odd. But nonetheless, this is not unusual. This is just a roadside stand. Uh, you see they've got some canvas or tarp of some sort um, and just some wood, you know, various sort of two-by-fours just to keep it up. All they have to really worry about is keeping the sun and the rain off. Uh, that's our, We don't have any winters that we have to worry about. If you're interested, and you might, uh, when the day comes to an end and they're finished for that day, they'll unroll some of that tarp down to in front of the uh, of the food and it will go away and come back early the next morning probably with more produce and nothing will have been stolen so just mentioning that but this is what you see he they have a uh, his little store is um very focused on certain types of, of fruit alone so here are some of them you can see the pineapples in front the pineapples are 75 cents each uh there's the cantaloupes the cantaloupes are one dollar each the watermelons in the back now these guys are smart Kids. I think there are three of them. They're all named Luis, <laughs> which is their friends. <laughs> Very amusing. Um, they're bright enough to have figured out that in the main supermarkets here, you get uh, they get a much higher price for the seedless watermelons, which are smaller, rounder, more compact than the standard watermelon. Uh, good price for it, and they're sometimes imported, although we grow our own here. They often import them as well. Um, they're, they're not cheap. And the profit margin on them are, is going to be better than on the traditional watermelon. Uh, so these guys, this is what they do. They do these watermelons. They're selling to just ordinary Panamanians. I remember, we're not a totally impoverished country. People can't afford <laughs> 50 cents or 75 cents for a watermelon, and that's what those cost back there. They're not terribly large, but they are uh, uh, very good. And they aren't all small there. This is Luis again. These, he's over here now with his uh, uh, $2, $1.50, $2, and off to the left there, $3 
melons. And you, you can bargain a little bit with it, but it's pretty much a set price. Uh, they're still not as large as their traditional melons. They're large enough, and they're really heavy because they're so dense, uh, densely packed, so to speak, with watermelon. Excellent, excellent. I love them. They have other things, too. They'll have coconuts down here, uh, just a few. People like those. That's fine. They'll have them. If customers want this sort of thing, they'll, have, they'll add it to their, their list. Had a little unexpected break there, <laughs> back to it again. But along with everything else, they had bags of oranges and what have you. But they are very focused on certain fruits. I love their watermelons, so I'm going to be going back there to get watermelons probably through the entire season, at least when I'm in that particular neighborhood. Now, it's not just uh, stands like that. You may have those in your own nation and be very familiar with them. But there are other places, too. Now, you may be driving down the street, as we were, after we had uh, finished uh, with Luis, and I saw this. Now, it's a pretty ordinary, it's a very ordinary neighborhood. It's not special or anything, it's not fancy. Buildings are old and they're not in the best of condition, and you know, so on. And you see this little shop here. And if you can look real closely, you would say it says fruteria, and that means basically it sells fruit, but it, typically a, a structure like that will also include vegetables. In fact, quite a variety of anything growing. Uh, so it, it seems maybe to strain people who have never been here before and they're just completely new to this, it can actually look a little threatening. I mean, it's dark and it's over the corner and what's going to happen if I walk in <laughs> everything else? And the answer to that is you're going to be greeted by somebody uh, well, first thing is that you're going to get a little closer to it. And when you get closer to it, you see it's a little happier, a little bit more cheerful than you saw from across the street. Frutas frescas, that's, uh, you know, fresh fruits and so forth. And then uh, we have uh, pipas frias. These are pine, um, coconuts. They'll keep them in a, in a refrigerator and pull them out, put a, a hole in them and stick a a straw in it, and you drink the coconut milk out of it. It's very popular. It's inexpensive, and it's a very popular thing to drink uh, and very refreshing. Then you walk into this uh, cheerful little store, and you'll meet the owner. I didn't catch his name. I forgot to ask for it this time. Very nice man. Didn't have a word of English. Didn't make any difference. Uh, well, of course, I could speak enough Spanish to deal with that easily, but the point is, is that he will work with you. <laughs> it's not hard. Uh, very nice, very nice people. And, and you're just a client. Remember, Panamanians have been seeing people from other countries their whole lives. This is the canal country, folks. So they're not going to look at you as some sort of bizarre thing. Now, you see there he's got a variety of you know, cucumbers and yams and so forth that are uh, he'll have potatoes. See this direction. He'll have uh, onions tomatoes, a variety of things like that. Now, I didn't need any fruit, obviously. I didn't really need any vegetables. I had quite a few already, but I got a pound of uh, the um, tomatoes. They're pear tomatoes, and there were like five nice pear tomatoes for 20 cents a piece. That's not super cheap, but it's, it's cheaper than the supermarket, and those I can use, so I bought those. But there's more than that. So here's a little store. You walk into it, and you don't have a bad experience. You have a good one. And you should do this when you're traveling around any place near you, where, regardless of where you live in Panama. You see something like this, go inside and look, because you're, you may find your favorite little place to go and buy things like this, as I have done. Now, further down the road, we saw this. I didn't stop here. We didn't have the time to do that, but this is a place where they sell fish. And I, you know, I, what can I say? They're probably pulled in from a little port not too far away from the city, a place called Coquira. I don't know, but I can tell you that uh, I would certainly stick my nose in this place to see what they had. Uh, and that will be very much dependent on the catch of the day and so forth. But this is, all of these things are within the city itself. But in this case, they happen to be out in one end of the city, in the eastern side of the city. Uh, but they're all, you find them scattered all over the urban area. And the key thing, again, is you see someplace like this, just walk in and say hello and find out what they have. They're going to be very friendly. Now, not far from me, in this, there's a third kind of story. It's sort of like um, the uh, fruteria that the gentleman was standing in a few minutes ago. 
but they're a little bit more specialized and they're inside the city. Uh, and here's the one that I go to, not far from where I live. That's Monica. <laughs> She's, uh, well, <laughs> she hates having her photo taken, but anyhow, there she is. Uh, she owns this little place. She's a delightful lady, and she is responsible. It's a she's a green grocer in the real sense of the term. Uh, so what she has is a very very small space, but we cram a lot of different kinds of potatoes and and uh, onions and what have you in here, where you can find things. These are mangoes, are very green. The green mangoes are fine for one type of uh, uh, for eating. Uh, and they're not all, they don't all have to be orange. Then the papaya in the background and uh, bananas, plantains, and so forth. So we have a variety. This is just a, just a little tiny store. And it doesn't stop there. And you can see some garlic and other items that uh, are for sale. Um, it's probably about the size of a small apartment's living room. And it, it's got it in there, but off in one side. They'll have refrigerated units too, so they have a number of things that are best kept refrigerated, including up in the upper left-hand corner, you can barely make it out, but there's asparagus. There's a whole variety of stuff that she keeps there. And directly in front of you, in the middle, just left of the center at the top, there's a plastic, a clear plastic container. Inside that is tofu, and she makes it. So it's homemade tofu, and it's a firm variety. I don't like the soft, mushy kind. So the firm kind is good. I can use that. I do use that in cooking. And she makes it fresh right there. And well, what more can you ask for? There's a lot of uh, herbs in there. There's uh, a lot of stuff, uh, you know, your typical your green onions or spring onions, if you like, um, cilantro, you know, standard things like that you're going to find pretty much anywhere in various types of uh, vegetables that are best kept cool. And then we had one other I'm missing one photo, so I'm going to stop here and get that photo so I can show you. So hang on for two seconds, and I will be right back. Okay, now I'm back. I found that photo. And it's uh, also from the same little store, uh, just at one corner of it. She has a number of products. Uh, they're Asian, many of them. Uh, but they're also Latino, and there's just different kinds of spices and sauces and what have you that are not necessarily going to pop right out at every supermarket in the city. And they are for uh, a lot of uh, cooking, be it you know, a specialized type of cooking. It, for this little tiny, tiny store, it's just jam full of stuff. And the people there are delightful people. So I do a lot of my simple shopping down there too. And finally, I wanted to show you, here we go. This is <laughs> the result of the day. Uh, that's a leftover uh, half of a cantaloupe from an earlier trip, just to let you see what they look like. Those are the dollar cantaloupes. Now you find, let's see, what do we got here? We've got the, uh, uh, that's a dollar, uh, Melon in front, watermelon in front, then a 75 cent on the left, and then a 50 cent on the right, and that's a two dollar melon in the back. Okay, and then the three pineapples, 75 cents each. The original cantaloupe is a dollar, and the five you know, tomatoes over here, very simple, were a buck. So now it's not everything. I actually had another two, uh, no, another pineapple, and another melon of the uh, sort of I think it was about the dollar size. And so I, would, I should have that, those two in here too. But they were handed over to the guard downstairs at the condo where I live, because uh, he's a nice guy. <laughs> and he's been very helpful to me. And he loved it. He had a, got a kick out of it. So what you're seeing right there is about $6 worth of food, anyhow. Maybe six, six fifty if I'm including the camera. Any event, there you go. Uh, I hope this helps you. Uh, get an idea of some of the things you can find. This is uh, my <laughs> me cutting up vegetables. I was doing a major stir fry that evening, and I almost didn't use this photo because the colors are so strong. It looks like I must have really done something. But uh, actually, it was the lights, I think, and the flash and everything else. It just really brought out the colors. 
And it was a beautiful, it was, I took a picture of it because it was so colorful and it was so pretty. So even if it looks like it's exaggerated, <laughs> I mean, you've got all sorts of stuff in here from the red onions and then there's cilantro in the back and there's uh, cucumbers and there's the colored yellow, orange, whatever in the center. Those are a, a small pepper, but they're a sweet pepper, but they're different consistency than the standard peppers like you can see on the right and so forth. There's buried under there all sorts of things that were chopped up for the, uh, for the stir fry that evening. But that's nice to be able to get this stuff locally and nearby and it's freshly grown. It comes from the farms and so forth. So what am I saying in effect is that when you come, if you choose to live in the city, wherever you choose to live, of course, but even in the city, you can find a number of different alternatives uh, where you can enjoy some of the, the natural produce that is grown here. We have a lot of uh, produce that is organically grown. Uh, we have uh, organic stores here. Uh, vegetarianism is not considered to be bizarre or anything of the sort. People just take that in stride. That's not a big deal. We have some vegans. We probably have every diet that is eaten in North America or Europe is represented here somewhere. And we all get along just fine with each other. But it's a terrific a, a variety. And I like to really encourage people that you don't have to go to the supermarket alone. All you have to do really is when you see one of these things, a stand uh, or a little a store or whatever, and you, you don't have to be somewhere else immediately, is stop. Because you probably went right past it. Turn around and go back. Go in and, and just talk to people. Just look around, point. Use body language, whatever is necessary. And you will find, uh, you might find a little place that you come to like very much and s save a little money and you get some nice fresh food and you have the pleasurable experience of uh, the inner exchange with these folks um, who are just very nice people across the board. Every person we've seen here, you know, it's just, and that day were just really wonderful people. And just in case you think that we don't do anything here that isn't traditional in this household, uh, Eric, who was driving me around, and I stopped by an old traditional American place that's called Krispy Kreme for donuts <laughs> on the way back. If you're not familiar with Krispy Kreme donuts, we think they're just about the best ever. And uh, it's Eric's first time to have them, and he agrees. So <laughs> we don't just eat vegetables around here, by golly. We get our sugar, too. Any case, Thanks for stopping by. I just, this is sort of an unusual show. I know once in a while I'll try to do something like this when I'm out and I can show you things like this. It's easier to do than videos because of the noise of traffic going around and so forth. I don't always, you have to have a pretty professional operation to make those things work well and I don't like to do them so, uh, with, unless they're really done well. So using photographs seems to do the trick. So thank you for the patience in going through all this with me today. Uh, just giving you an idea that when you get hungry, there's something here for you to eat. See you next week. Oh, yes, and don't forget, you like this sort of stuff, or even if you don't, <laughs> feel free to subscribe. <laughs> and if you hit the bell beside the subscription button, they'll give you an immediate notification of new videos. But whatever the case may be, it's been great to have you by, and I will look forward to seeing you again.